interested in scoliosis correction, come learn what works. When people ask if scoliosis can be corrected, a lot of times they're asking is, can you cure my scoliosis? Unfortunately, scoliosis is an uncurable condition, but it is highly treatable. We know scoliosis is a progressive condition, meaning it, scoliosis has it in its very nature to worsen over time. So if you manage or treat scoliosis and most often try to reduce scoliosis, you can definitely treat the problem. Now, how does scoliosis progress? Scoliosis progresses specifically because of the size of curvature, meaning that it's increasing in its size. As scoliosis curves become more severe, they tend to have a greater effect on the body, greater postural deformity, greater chance of causing pain and malfunction. Scoliosis curves progress, they become more and more severe, and they, they have a wide variety of range. They normally start off in a very mild stage, they progress into moderate, and then to severe, and then into very severe. So where all scoliosis, when scoliosis is initially diagnosed, it's not indicated of where it's going to stay. We definitely know curves progress in specific stages, and only proactive treatments that work towards counteracting this progressive nature of scoliosis, and the best way to counteract the progressive nature of scoliosis is actually to reduce the curve, will normally give us a better response. As curves progress, there are some key things that always tend to happen. The spine tends to get more rigid, it, the, the curve becomes more severe. There tends to be more rotation. This makes it less responsive to treatment and more, con and more complex to treat. So I always say smaller curves at younger ages typically respond better than more severe curves at older ages. Now, what causes these curves progress and what's the most, the most common risk factor? So we don't always know how severe a curve will progress to, and we always don't know what actually causes the curve initially to start. But we do understand the triggers that are involved with the progression. And by far, the largest trigger with progression in a scoliosis is growth and development or puberty. Patients that haven't reached skeletal maturity, children, adolescents, juveniles, are at risk for significant progression because of rapid, unpredictable growth spurts, particularly in adolescent scoliosis that is typically diagnosed between 10 and 18 years of age. And when kids or adolescents go through this rapid phase of growth, the amount of progression that can occur is unknown. Some curves progress 10 or 15 degrees, some 15 to 20, some 30, 40, some 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. I've seen curves as large as 150 degrees in children still growing. So the amount of progression that can occur in this stage can be very, very significant. It, and unfortunately, it can be very fast. I've seen curves progress 20 degrees in six to eight weeks. I've seen curves I've seen curves progress 60 degrees in six months. So the amount of progression occurs is unknown, and is but it's also directly related to how fast the curve progresses. Now, in the adult stage, curves still progress, but they progress at a much slower rate because this rapid growth trigger is now gone. The progression in the adult stage happens as a result of gravity over time. Now, unfortunately, this gravity over time concept tends to snowball. As the curve gets bigger, gravity affects it more, causing it to get bigger faster. And as it gets bigger faster, it gets bigger even faster. So growth, I mean, gravity over time and age, so the size of curve and age of the patient, because the longer they're going, the more it's picking up speed, we tend to see this increase of progression as patients get into older, uh, older age or later stage life. So we see another rapid phase of progression when we're seeing patients 50, 60, 70 years and older because of this long-term progressive state of scoliosis. Now, when we talk about corrective treatment when it comes to scoliosis, what we're talking about is reducing the size of the curve. Corrective treatments are possible with conservative treatment with the end goal being correction, meaning reduction. Correction doesn't mean curing. Like we had, there's no treatment that actually cures scoliosis. And we look at scoliosis treatments, we have two main approaches, approaches. We have one that's called traditional types of approaches and we call one conservative type of treatments. Now, sometimes traditional approaches use some conservative treatments, but the goals of the treatments are not the same. And I'll explain that in a second. Traditional treatment options really just try to funnel patients or try to slow down progression until curves become severe enough where now surgery is at the end treatment to try to stop progression. The goal is not really trying to reduce curves before they become surgical. It's really just 
slowing it down. They're just trying to slow it down. And at the end goal, when the when the conservative treatments fail, this is what they're doing. And they're doing something called spinal fusion, where they're doing surgery to actually fuse the spine. Correcting scoliosis, in my means, trying to reduce the curve before it becomes surgical level and managing the curve on a structural level. So therefore, as the curve stays small, it's less likely to progress into this more severe stage. So we, look, we want to deal with corrective measures for scoliosis, not curative measures, but corrective measures to reduce the size and managing this progressive risk because the smaller the curve is, the less likely it is to progress to severe. So how do these conservative treatments work in actually reducing or correcting scoliosis? Well, conservative treatment normally combines many specific treatment. Um, protocols, definitely successful ones. We're not just relying on therapy or exercises or bracing or, or chiropractic care. We're using all these different things. And the first rule that a, a treatment must impact a scoliosis on a structural level for it to be considered effective. Meaning if the treatment isn't reducing the scoliosis on a structural level, we have to question how effective it's going to be at reducing a curve because we know in, the, in this progressive state, the definition of scoliosis is a structural misalignment or deformity. It's not um, muscle imbalances. So we, we definitely, we don't look, look at just soft tissue work. We're looking at structural approaches. Now, chiropractic care can help adjust the position of the of the curve by dealing with the most tilted vertebras and start adjusting them. There's many different chiro types of chiropractic therapies and adjustments that can help being used to help reposition the spine back into alignment. So we use a lot of these chiropractic approaches to help get us a better result. In addition, we integrate many types of physical therapy approaches using tractions, and vibrations and neuromuscular education and balance and gait therapies to help realign the spine. Also, we use something called specific scoliosis exercises. Now, SSE, specific scoliosis exercises, are exercises that are designed to help address or give exercises to help reduce the curve on a structural level. SSEs are not general exercises to increase strength and flexibility of the body in a general format. As far as we know, General therapy, general exercises has no effect on curve progression in the adolescent or the adult stage. However, scoliospecific exercises that are designed based upon the curve type, curve presentation, severity, and location, those are designed to actually reduce the curve. Once we use all these things to help reduce the curve, now we can use home therapy and home re rehabilitation to help manage this reduction. And we also can design something that we call corrective bracing. Now, this is where there's some overlap because a lot of times patients may go to a traditional uh, type of doctor and they'll provide them a brace, but the brace is designed just to try to slow down progression during the growth stage. We use corrective bracing to help reduce the curve, like braces, like corrective braces on your teeth. Since we're using corrective braces to help reduce the curve, we can use them really in any stage in the progressive nature or any age of the patient to actually help us facilitate corrective results by improving not only the spinal position, but also the asymmetrical postural deviations that we tend to see. Once we see all this, we change the shape of the body, we provide home therapy, we do corrective bracing, we do the corrective type of chiropractic care, the therapy, the rehabilitation, we can reduce curves and stabilize them. By reducing the curve, now we're allowing the spine and the body to heal and recover in a more corrected position. That's what we mean by correcting scoliosis. We don't mean by curing it, meaning we're not taking these curves, 50, 60 degree curves, and reducing them down to zero. We're taking these curves and we're reducing the magnitude by allowing, by, by reducing the structural component. And then these effects of correcting scoliosis start to take place. Once these unnatural spinal curvatures have been reduced on a structural level, the condition the underlying structural problem has been addressed. So what ends up happening is all the uneven forces that are distributed throughout the body also tend to reduce. It's these uneven or unnatural forces that occur to the body that can lead to a lot of the things that are associated with scoliosis. Posture deviation tends to be improved. Um, pain, more common in adults, tends to be improved because we're reducing the, the amount of asymmetrical compression that's occurring to the spine and nerves and tissues around it. And then we also recommend that patients lead a, a scoliosis-friendly lifestyle. They're doing things that are not going to be exacerbating their scoliosis and maintaining these, uh, these reductions over their lifeline. So even though when we look at treating or managing scoliosis and we're looking at 
correcting scoliosis. We know that we want to slow down progression, and that's definitely one of the focuses associated here in Scoliosis Reduction Center, but it's by far not our main focus. Our main focus is working on correcting and reducing the curve is our number one treatment goal for the majority of our patients. And even though there's never 100% guarantees which curves are going to respond, we definitely know early diagnosis, early treatment, younger patients will always respond better. Now, I've taken care of patients in their 60s, 70s, 80s. In fact, the oldest patient I've taken care of has been 97 years old. We definitely can treat older patients, but there's more limits. There's less things that we can achieve. So if you know you have scoliosis, and you know it's there, we definitely recommend treating it at a smaller age because you can get better results because all we tend to know with scoliosis, either in adolescent or in the adult stage, that it's progressive in nature. It's gonna worsen. We don't know how fast or to what magnitude, but it's more likely gonna worsen at some level. So reducing a small curve and never letting it becoming severe is a much better outcome than letting a curve become severe and now dealing with the limitations of a severe scoliosis and how it won't respond to conservative treatment as effectively. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.